a generation who have lived a quarter of their years under the shadow of COVID-19. Cornflakes made me feel quite sad. And I didn't like it. Coronavirus is is a, a kind of like dirty thing and it's small. It sometimes kills people. I might have to try and not believe in it. We conducted a survey of early years teachers about the effect of the pandemic on their pupils and the results are worrying. 72% reported a regression in children's literacy skills since schools reopened in March. More than half noticed a drop in their numeracy. 65% saw an increase in speech and language issues. And more than half told us that they worry that the children in their current class won't catch up to where they should be. How was it when we were all at home for lockdown? Sad. Why was it sad for you? So some children could be a couple of months behind, um, some children could be even further behind than that. So yeah, up to a year behind where we would expect them to be. And what was on the farm? A cow. A cow. Come on, Bye. We're in May and probably doing things we might have done at Christmas time or, or even before. There are baby pigs. Do you remember what the baby pigs are called? Pigger. Children who are just starting out on their schooling have struggled the most to engage in online learning and this has had a huge impact on their communication skills. Children who are coming to school with very few words, it's very evident they've not had that opportunity for social interaction with, with a wider group of people. Everyone say, unk. Let's sound it out, you ready? The Prime Minister has pledged no child will be left behind, but although each school can apply for extra funding to help their pupils catch up, experts say it's not nearly enough. They estimate that £13.5 billion is needed to address lost learning. That's nearly ten times what's been promised so far. There are warnings that the last year of unprecedented disruption will impact the life chances of the most vulnerable. Five-year-olds that have vocabulary difficulties are four times more likely to have reading problems as adults. They're three times more likely to have mental health issues as adults and they're twice as likely as adults to be unemployed. Of course, some children catch up, but what we know is that that very early attainment gap that we see before children start school gets bigger over time, and the bigger it gets, the harder it is to close. And there's evidence that the damage extends far beyond the academic. Our survey exposed the impact on children's mental and social well-being. 85% of early years teachers reported a regression in children's social skills since schools reopened in March. Half saw a drop in children's mental health. We asked teachers who took part in our survey to tell us their experiences. This is what they said. One boy wrote a story. He repeated one phrase over and over again. It's been a tough day. We've had children biting, kicking, swearing at staff. Every day, children are telling us about issues from home. Safeguarding has increased dramatically. For too many children, the pandemic has been tough, but some family situations have made it even tougher. She just sits in a corner, really quite withdrawn. Yeah, she's just, she's lost. Six-year-old Charlotte has spent the pandemic shielding with her family to protect her brother, Bailey. She associates COVID with death, but the reality is um, her brother wouldn't survive COVID. Open up. Open up. Open up. <laughs> the family had to introduce rigid routines. She's coming in and we're stripping her at the front door, putting her clothes in the wash, putting her in the shower. She's not allowed to interact with her brother until she's almost been in like a sheep dip. But when it was time to go back to school in March, Charlotte was petrified. The night before, she just cried all night long. She does not want to leave the house. Um, and she keeps saying, well, if it could kill Bailey, then how come we're all going back out again? I'm hoping we'll get back the, the feisty, vibrant little girl that she was before. 
one potato, two potatoes. Oh, I, I don't like Corona. It makes you die if you don't have a mask on. I don't like it because I can't go to other people's houses. I don't know when it's going to get go away. I don't know. Do you think you could go and find some worms? I think... For us as a school, a focus on the children's well-being has been the most important thing. All the headlines in the press are around literacy and numeracy and, and you know, children are going to be behind with that. You know, those things will happen if the well-being is right. One, a third of the teachers in our survey think it'll take at least five years for children to catch up. These very little ones, um, hopefully, will gain those building blocks that they need to make progress but that's very difficult to say at this point. I mean, you hope that they will, but it's whether that, that will actually happen. Our youngest and most vulnerable school children could be living with the legacy of the pandemic for years to come. Their recovery will be crucial if we're to avoid a lost generation.